Hey there, it's Ben Housel, and here in this tutorial, we're gonna be having a look at how we keep backups of our external drives. I'm also gonna talk about how I set up my working drive uh, that I'm editing from. I'm using a couple of solid state hard drives, um, but in particular, we're gonna be having a look at the Carbon Copy Cloner software, which I use to keep synchronized copies of all my projects um, on my backup drives and also on my working drives. Now Carbon Copy Cloner is sponsoring this video, um, but I've been using it for um, a long time, for about, uh, 10, 15 years now um, in its different kind of incarnations. Um, and it's a really great piece of software that you can use for cloning your Mac, for keeping backups of your external hard drives, um, and for generally kind of managing your data. In this workflow, we're gonna be having a look at how we set up timed backups um, of different drives. Um, and I'm also gonna kind of talk a little bit about my, my drive setup. So the main types of projects I'm working with are for Final Cut Pro 10, um, but also if you're working with larger files for photography um, or other kind of video editing applications like Premiere Pro, then this tutorial will be useful as well. It's really focused on how we back up and kind of keep copies of the massive amounts of videos that we shoot when we're working in these creative applications. So first things first, I'm gonna run through the different hard drives um, that I have and use. So the first drives or kind of set of drives that we'll talk about um, is my main boot drive and then also my main video editing drive. And we'll kind of have a look at um, that first of all. So I have the OWC uh, Thunder Bay uh, 4 and basically in this enclosure I have three hard drives set up. So I have my uh, system hard drive um, because I didn't want to open up my iMac uh, to actually install the system drive. So um, I run my system drive from here and also a Stripe drive. So that's two solid state drives um, that I edit my video from. Um, so basically when you Stripe drives, you're basically writing to two drives at the same time. If either one of them fails, uh, then you've lost everything. Um, but that's why I keep the, the kind of backups with Carbon Copy Cloner um, from those drives. So basically I've always got backups to around an hour ago, um, which means that I can keep editing, but I'm not kind of interfering with my editing workflow um, as I'm working. So I do don't want backups to happen too often sometimes because then it will really interfere with what you're doing. And then I've also got a larger backup drive in here as well, uh, an eight terabyte drive, which I use um, not for Carbon Copy Cloner, but for my time machine backups um, from my Mac system. Uh, and then I've got other kind of copies of my system as well. So if we open this up, and we'll move the laptop out of the way as well for this. So you can see uh, there's kind of four uh, drive enclosures in here. And basically each one of these pops out. So if we just unscrew one of these and pop this out, then basically in here um, we can put in a full three and a half inch drive or a uh, two and a half inch drive. Um, basically this is one of my stripe drives um, that I use for video editing. So I've got two of these in two of these different bays. Um, and then in my other bays, I've got my backup drive. So we don't need to look at any more solid state drives, but we've also got in this last one here on this side, we've got the larger kind of uh, eight terabyte drive. So I don't want to edit video um, from this, um, but it's great for a backup um, and means that I've got a lot of extra storage uh, for backing things up. So the size of my solid state drives are both for my striped uh, video editing drives are one terabyte each. That means I have two terabytes of editing space um, because you don't lose any space when you're working with a striped RAID. And then I was planning to run the system off uh, a RAID in here as well, um, but you can't do that on Mac OS X anymore. Um, it won't allow it when you install it. So I basically got one solid state drive that is my uh, system drive. So basically I have my uh, three drives in here um, that show up as three different drives. The two Stripe drives will show up as one drive. My system drive will show up as my other drive. And then my backup will um, show up as a different drive. And then I also use a couple of these uh, cheaper portable hard drives um, to back up my edits as well. So normally uh, what you want to do is keep at least uh, three copies um, of your work. Um, and these portable drives are great because they're cheap, um, so you can keep three or four copies of your work without breaking the bank. Um, and by using Carbon Copy Cloner, you can kind of quickly set that up so it syncs up, even if you're plugging and unplugging um, drives out. So I've got some solid state drives that I use when I'm traveling and editing. Um, and I also have those back up as well when I'm using Carbon Copy Cloner. So I'm just using a handful of these drives um, as well as my drives in here to kind of keep everything uh, synced up. And the portable drives are nice as well um, because 
it means that um, you can keep stuff off site as well. So normally I'll take one of these and plug it in uh, once a week or once every other week. So I've got backups of my projects um, off site as well. So that's a little bit about the, the drive setup. So that's enough about the hard drives uh, for now. Let's dive into Carbon Copy Cloner and have a look at how we actually set these drives up to uh, synchronize. Um, and we can set them up so they synchronize on a schedule, but also so that whenever we plug in a drive, for instance, we're taking a drive traveling with us and we can set it up so that as soon as we get back to our desktop machine, then it will sync up um, automatically. So let's put this to one side um, for the moment. And now we're gonna dive into the Mac system and Carbon Copy Cloner and have a look at how we back up for me, uh, mostly my Final Cut Pro projects. Um, and then if you're using any other applications, the process will be um, exactly the same uh, for kind of keeping synced copies of all your work. So we've opened up Carbon Copy Cloner here. And as we saw in the intro video, I have a few drives where I'm managing my work. So I have backups of my main working video file from a two terabyte drive to an eight terabyte drive. And one of the nice things about that is it means that Carbon Copy Cloner will keep incremental backups of that disk. I'm using Time Machine for my main system backup. So really, Carbon Copy Cloner is used mainly for backing up my different video files. So basically, uh, these are my current and kind of scheduled tasks. But I have a couple of demo disks that we'll use uh, for this example. So video and video backup. And at the moment, you can see there's these four video files um, on the one disk and then nothing in the video backup folder. So what we're gonna do is come into Carbon Copy Cloner and set up a scheduled task so that whenever those devices are connected or whenever we want, the backup will happen. So if we go to File and New Task, we'll call this Video Backup. And once we have this set up, we need to set a source file, so the drive that you want to backup and then a destination, so the drive that you're backing up to. And we're gonna copy all files for the source. So we're gonna to go to the video drive and select that and click here and we'll go to video backup for the backup. And this safety net is basically gonna keep incremental backups um, of your drive. So when I'm using my two terabyte kind of main editing drive and my eight terabyte backup drive, then basically my backup drive because it's bigger than my main drive can keep incremental backups of that until it's full. So it can keep quite a lot of uh, backups of the different projects I'm working on if I ever delete something and need to go back. And basically it's gonna copy your files, the safety net will leave off for this. And basically files unique to the destination um, will be permanently deleted. So anything that is not on the video drive will be deleted, which is fine. Um, and then we'll go to no specified schedule where it says that across on the right and we're going to run this as an hourly schedule and so basically in here we've got options of when we want to run it we can also limit when the task is run so if you're wanting to run it at lunchtime um, or only at nighttime when you're not working and that will kind of obviously ease the burden on your system um, then you can do that uh, we'll just have it running hourly which is how i normally have it set up um, so that if i ever lose everything or my computer kicks the bucket, then I've only lost an hour's worth of work. Um, and we can also limit the days of the week on which the task can run as well. So we've got a few different options in the scheduling um, that we can use. So we'll press done to that. So it's gonna run it every hour and we'll save that. So basically uh, this task may delete some files and folders from video backup, that is fine. We'll press save, I'm not worried about that. And now we can run our first backup by pressing clone here. So basically we get the same warning that it might delete stuff. We're not gonna show that again. And then we'll hit run now. And so now we're backing up from that video drive um, to the video backup drive. And this is a small backup, so it happens uh, pretty quickly. And you'll find that um, actually the two drives that I'm using here are USB drives. So things are happening a little bit more slowly, but when I'm backing up from my solid state drive to my backup drive, things happen pretty quickly. And so we've got a little tick box now that says the task happened and when it last happened, and you can see the last times that these tasks happened as well. So these are happening regularly on my system. So 
once this is set up, if we come back to our desktop, I am going to inject my video back up. So you can see the files are on there now. And I'm going to add some more videos into my video folder. So actually, we'll reorganize things a little bit here. We'll, we'll call this Surf Videos 01. And we'll pop all these in here. So we're doing a bit of organization on the main video drive. We'll call this Surf Videos 02. And we'll grab a handful of other videos and drop them in there. Okay, so on my video drive, things have changed around a bit. I'm going to pop back in my backup. And now we could wait for the task to happen or we can click clone. And it's basically going to reclone the video drive to the backup drive. Now we can set up more than one backup for the video drive. So for instance, if you have drives that you use on the road and you want to back them up on different computers, then you can do that too. You can set the syncing up. You just need to figure out the workflow of where the data is going at different points in time. But basically I have a external hard drive um, that I back up um, only when it plugs in. And we can also set up that kind of task um, for this drive too. So we can have the hourly backup, but we can also have a backup that will happen uh, whenever the drive is plugged in. So again, it's copied all those files. It's copied eight files. If we have a look on the video drive, we've got my Surf Videos 1, Surf Videos 2, and then my video backup is an exact copy of that as well. So let's set up a new backup here. So I'm going to make a new task. We'll call this video backup on connect. So basically we're going to set this one up so that when our video drive is plugged in, it will back up to our backup drive. So this is useful if you're, like I said, moving around and working on different projects. So we've got the video drive, we've got the video backup, and this time we will set the schedule so that it runs when the source or destination is reconnected. So I'm going to select that. We'll leave this all as is. And basically whenever a drive appears, um, it's going to back those up. So now I'm going to unplug my backup drive and on my video drive I'm going to make surf videos 3 we'll grab a few more files so we've got these three files there I'm going to plug back in my backup drive and we can see in carbon copy cloner that it's detected that it's connected. It's comparing the files. And because there's only three new files, the kind of backup and comparison should happen a bit quicker. So the task is completed. It's just copied three files this time rather than the 13 that are on there. And if we look at the backup drive, then you can see all those files are a perfect duplicate of these files. So where I would recommend starting with a backup is think you need three copies of everything. So basically you need your main working drive, um, which for video editing using a solid state drive is really a good way to go. And then you need two backup drives. So for those two drives, um, you're basically gonna use cheaper drives. So cheaper drives and bigger drives. So if you select a three and a half inch drive or a cheaper external USB drive that you're using only for backing up, um, then you've got a nice kind of level of redundancy in there. And then when, rather than if, one of those drives actually kicks the bucket, um, then you can replace that drive and set up a new sync um, for those drives. So that will help you to kind of keep your working projects backed up. The nice thing about the portable drives is that you can back them up on reconnect. So keep your working projects in the office and take your portable drive home. And then you can make a decision as to how often you want to back things up and just bring that portable drive back, reconnect it, let it back up, and then take it off site again. So that's a quick overview of how to back things up. I'll leave some links below to the drives that I'm using. Um, so you can see the kind of different costs of those drives. Um, and if you have any questions about backing up or working in Final Cut Pro or managing files, 
in Final Cut Pro, then please do leave a comment um, below um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.